Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Grape Show. And today I'm solo again, and we're going to talk about the three things that you need to get results. So we're going to talk mostly about entrepreneurship. And I'm wondering, are you curious how successful entrepreneurs get the results they get? Well, you're, there are three things that consistently entrepreneurs need to get results and achieve business success. And that's what we're going to dive into today. If you want to get results, you have to be willing to do the work that it takes to get them. And sometimes that means stepping outside the box. To get results, you must first and foremost, have a positive mindset and believe that your, de that your desired results are possible. No excuses. You must create a strategy, a step-by-step -step approach to get the results that you desire. And you must take intentional, effective action, which is going to be determined by your strategy. So let's break these down. But first, this method that I'm going to teach you today to help you get results is based on my purpose to results method, how to get results using my purpose to results program is broken down like this. So first is mindset, situational mind modeling for clarity, confidence, and connection with purpose and impact. When you have a positive mindset, you inevitably will have more clarity. You'll be able to make decisions better. You'll be able to create strategy better. You'll focus more and you'll be able to implement all of the things that it takes to really make your purpose and your God-led calling come to fruition. Strategy, simplified, sustainable strategy long-term strategies embodying SEO systems and processes for success and action, the accountability framework to ensure consistent execution. So let's look at what does it actually mean to have a positive mindset? And you guys, I know we have done episodes on this before, but it takes our brains somewhere between seven and 21 times to remember things, hearing it. To, to then remember it. So I feel like sometimes, you know, we talk about the same things over and over a little bit, but at the same time, the reality is that our brains need this. And every time we hear something, we may hear it a little bit differently. We may hear it in a unique way. And then that gives us the authority within our own mind to actually take hold of that information and implement it within our own lives or businesses. So we're going to talk about some of the things we've already talked about on the show, but probably most likely you're going to hear them in a unique way and something will resonate with you and it will really motivate you and inspire you to take action in a new way today. So if you want to get results, you do have to believe that your goals and dreams are possible. And that God has a purpose for you and he will equip you so that you can fulfill that calling that he's placed on your heart. The beliefs you have will influence your thoughts. Your thoughts will invoke your emotions. Emotions trigger feelings and your thoughts and emotions hand in hand will determine your behavior choices, whether you take intentional action or you just sit back, maybe watch Netflix and hope that something will happen for you, which woo, nothing's ever going to just happen. Nothing's just going to fall out of the sky. I know, I know this new age woo woo stuff talks about manifestation and doing this and doing that, using crystals, using astrology, all these things, and you're going to make a ton of money and you're going to be successful, but those things are not sustainable. What is sustainable is navigating your beliefs navigating your thoughts to make sure that you feel positive, you're ready to take action, you feel empowered, inspired, and energetic to take the action that's necessary to accomplish the tasks at hand. That's not to say if you ask God for something that he's not going to give that to you. If you approach him with thanksgiving, with prayer and petition, of course, he's going to answer your prayers. 
but he also expects us to take action. I think it's in Proverbs where our, there's, there's a proverb that says, um, you know, lazy hands are or idle hands are not productive and they're actually not pleasing to God. So that does indicate to us that we are to take action, doing mindset work so that you can have a positive mindset and believe in this calling that he's placed on your heart is part of that action. So thinking things like, what if it doesn't work? What if no one hires me? What if I'm not good enough? Well, they're already doing this. I don't have time. She's better than me. I can't afford it. That's an objection that if you're a coach, especially, or if you have a high ticket item, people will have an objection to price, but that's a mindset because the more you invest in yourself, the more you're going to learn, the more accountability you're going to have, the more results you're going to get. If you're ready to launch something, but you're thinking, what if it's not perfect yet? What if I'm too old to start something new? You're never too old to start something new. The list could go on and on, but your thoughts are going to produce your results. If you are focusing on what if negative thoughts because you don't believe that something's possible, you will most likely not be able to focus on creating a strategy because your mind will be running in a million different places, spinning out of control, just thinking what if, what, what if, what if, and you won't be able to make decisions to move you forward. When struggling with those what if negative, doubtful thoughts, catch them and challenge them. Are they real? Are they legitimate? Would someone you know, love and trust actually be thinking the same things you're thinking? And if they're not, change the thoughts. If it is not rational or realistic, get rid of it, change it. The more you practice this activity or this method, this is my five C's, part of my five C's method for journaling. The more you practice this, the better your thoughts will be and the, the better your results will be. But the catch is that the more you practice this, the more control you're going to have over your thoughts. Therefore, the more confidence you're going to have. And confidence is something that if you have confidence in yourself, your audience is going to see that you're confident in yourself and they're going to have more belief and more trust in you that you can provide the service or the offer that you are selling and that you can do so effectively and actually get results for them as well. But here's the thing. You have to recognize that you're human. And as humans, we very quickly will fall back into negative thought cycles or patterns. And that happens because of previous experiences, traumas or outcomes, things people have said to us. Um, it's a great, here's a great scripture for you that I think it's a great reference for meditation or um, journaling around. And that is Romans 12 too. And I know I've mentioned this verse in other episodes, but it's one that when I'm feeling doubtful or negative, it's one that I refer to a lot because when we talk about the brain and the neuroscience of the brain, we actually, because of the way God created our, our brains, we can change the neural pathways of our brain. So if we're stuck in negative thought cycles, we can actively change those patterns. So here's the verse, Romans 12, two, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So similarly, comparison is often going to result from doubt or comparison will cause more doubt. It can go either way, but this can often happen if you're spending a lot of time consuming content instead of making decisions and taking action within your business or your life. But another scripture verse that I like to meditate on, and I refer to it a lot and journal around it a lot is Galatians 6, 4. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. The decisions that you make are going to influence your outcomes. So if your thoughts determine 
how actively you make decisions and how positively you make decisions, that's going to influence your results. So to get results, you must make good decisions. Your decisions will lead to actions. If you have negative thoughts, you will stay stuck in a place of indecision. And indecision never produces positive outcomes because you're not taking a step forward. You're not taking action to move the needle on your business. And indecision will keep you stuck in this cycle of procrastination and those questioning what ifs. If you want to get results, you have to practice healthy habits for your mind. For those neural pathways that we already said, we've already discovered scientifically, you can change. So catch those negative, what if doubtful thoughts, challenge the negative thoughts, and then change them. Journal every day and practice gratitude. Those things, those activities will help you change those neural pathways. So the next part of the purpose to results formula is the strategy component. You have to create strategies if you want to move forward. You can set all the goals you want, but if you don't have strategies in place to reach them, you're not going to go anywhere. But when you have a strategy in place to market your brand, to market your business, to have systems and processes, to create and repurpose content, to be present for your audience and potential clients, and genuinely represent yourself as who you are authentically sharing your God-given gifts and talents, you will more likely get the results that you crave. A brand marketing strategy begins with your personal brand. What makes you unique? How do you want others to perceive you? Your brand marketing strategy will differentiate you from all others in your area of expertise or your niche. Creating a personal brand and differentiating yourself using your brand marketing strategy will help you get positive results. How? Because your audience will see you as the expert that you truly are. They will see you as the solution for them and their needs, their problems. They'll see that you align with their values. That what you offer is exactly what they need and that you are the only one that can provide the solution the way that you do it. Your brand marketing strategy also includes your systems and processes. Now you might think, well, how do systems and processes affect my marketing? Well, <laughs> because systems and processes, including your onboarding and offboarding processes, reflect your personal brand and help with customer service, client retention, and future referrals. Again, those systems and processes that you have in place are going to be an example of how, or they're actually going to influence how people perceive you and how they perceive working with you. The easier you make it for people to work with you, the easier it's going to be for them to refer you and for them to trust you. So in addition, you need SEO strategy, PR strategy, email marketing strategies, sales strategies. You need to have a strategy in place for your offers and your pricing. You need hiring and delegation strategies, mindset strategies, social media strategy. And if, if you're using it, um, again, I'm not going to recommend it until you've already built the foundation for your business, but you also need strategies for Pinterest and LinkedIn, as well as things like bookkeeping, but all of those things within your business that are going to help move the needle forward to get the results that you want have to have systems and processes in place. The strategies that you need are going to be very specific to your business, but there is no question, no doubt whatsoever that strategy is necessary if you are going to have a solid foundation for long-term success and that limitless opportunity for revenue. Let's look at each one of the strategies individually. We're not going to go into every single one of them, but we'll just note that I do have other episodes linked in the show notes. So always click on the link, read full show notes to access all of the links that I am providing for you because there's a wealth of information here. Instead of having to search for something, you can go to this blog post and then just simply 
click on the, the hyperlinks and go to other blog posts to learn more about each individual thing that I mentioned, like Pinterest strategy or LinkedIn or sales or any of those things. So when we talk about an SEO strategy, unless you optimize your website, your soulmate clients will have a hard time finding you. A good SEO strategy includes not only your own website being optimized, but using PR to get reputable backlinks to your site, driving traffic to your site, and providing valuable, meaningful content your audience wants and needs. I like to lump Pinterest and LinkedIn into the SEO strategy because Pinterest is a search engine. Pinterest is not a social media platform. It is not just a DIY platform. If you think about it, people go on Pinterest to search things. So that is a search engine. And it is, I, I'm not going to say equally as powerful as Google because I don't have those statistics, but it is incredibly powerful. It's like YouTube. It's a search engine. And so it drives traffic to your website. So you do need a Pinterest marketing strategy that becomes part of your overarching marketing strategy. And then LinkedIn profiles are often the very first search results that come up when someone Googles your name. So you need to have a polished LinkedIn profile and you need to have a strategy for using LinkedIn to drive traffic to your website. Or I should say also for building relationships and for sharing valuable content, like long form content, like a blog post or a podcast episode or writing articles on the platform itself. PR strategy, public relations is a powerful way to get more eyes on your personal brand and business. Examples of PR include interviewing on podcasts, TV, radio shows, things like that, traditional media outlets, writing articles for journals and magazines, and guest blogging. Those are just to name a few. In addition, speaking to groups and organizations can be part of your PR strategy and your marketing strategy. And speaking often generates extra revenue as well. Not only because you can get paid, but you could sell from the stage or you just bring people into your community and they buy from you. They've already grown trust for you because they saw you speak. Your email marketing strategy. How can you accumulate email addresses so that you can communicate with your audience at any time about any offer or just simply show up in their inbox and provide value to build trust? An email marketing strategy overlaps with SEO because you can send links to your blog post and content on your website, which Google is going to see is like, oh, this is great. All these people click and go to her website. Likewise, when you have a PR strategy, you can drive people to your email list by having a lead magnet that you share at the end of the interview or invite them to your email list if you have a special program that you do via email, so on and so forth. But this way, when they're on your email list, you get to nurture them. And the more you nurture them, the more they get to know you, the more they love you and trust you. And since trust determines buying practices, having these people on your email list to nurture them is going to be incredibly powerful for you to grow your business, sell, and get the results you want. So social media strategy, if you choose to use social media, I said it before and I'll say it again, I recommend waiting until the foundation of your business is established. And I recommend this so that you can avoid confusion by consuming content, seeing what other people in your niche are doing. We don't want you to copy what other people are doing, obviously, because then that would make you look just like everybody else. And we want you to stand out. We want you to differentiate yourself. We also don't want you to get sucked into comparison. And oftentimes when you're starting a business or you're wanting to grow, but you're still an early entrepreneur, say, you know, new, just starting to say three to four years, it's very easy to get sucked into that comparison game and think, start thinking those what if thoughts. Well, what if I'm not as good as they are? What if they have all the clients already? Or what if they're doing it better? There is no need to compare. There are enough people out there to go around. And, you know, remember that your content strategy should start with long form content, such as a blog or a podcast, and then be repurposed to social media because the social media could go down 
it, you could lose all your followers, your account could get hacked. There's a million different things that could happen that you could lose all of that content that you had put there. So make sure that you're creating your content in a place that is safe. It is yours. You own it and then repurpose it to social media. If you are going to use social media, the only thing I'll add about social media strategy is that it is a great place to build relationships and give yourself the opportunity for future collaborations and referrals. We recently did a show comparing SEO and social media. So um, I'll hyperlink that in the show notes as well. So you can get a better feel for what, what that is like having your SEO strategy. There is a place for both. However, I'm always going to suggest an SEO strategy over social media simply because it gives you the opportunity to be found on Google from anywhere in the world at any time. And that just gives you more opportunity to have eyes on your business versus the 2% of your followers that may see your content on social media. Okay, other strategies, some additional ones like your offer and pricing strategy. The first phase of this strategy is getting to know your soulmate client. What offer will be best for them? What will serve them the best? And your pricing should be based on the value you provide and the needs of your soulmate clients instead of trading dollars for time. When considering your offers, do you want to focus on low ticket online courses or do you want to focus on high ticket items, services, offers? What do your soulmate clients want and need from you? Your offers and pricing are going to differentiate from everybody else in your expertise, hopefully. I mean, you want that because you want to stand out. And if you believe you're the best, then you have to represent that through your offers and your pricing. Your off end. Also, I will say that the when you differentiate yourself by your offers and your pricing, it's also going to help you attract the people that you truly want to work with. Because if you're a high end coach and you have a high ticket offer, the people that are willing to invest in themselves are the and they are the people that you want to work with then you're going to be able to siphon those out. They're the people that are going to invest in you and be willing to take the action that you're recommending they take. So the more you differentiate yourself by offer and pricing, the more likely you are to help attract, help yourself attract your soulmate clients. But you also want to make sure that your offer strategy includes the consideration of your time and how much you want to work and how you will be able to provide the most and best value without getting burned out. Because that does happen, unfortunately. So um, hiring and delegation strategies. What task do you want to avoid? What task are you not good at? And what tasks are too time consuming and they suck the life out of you? You are the CEO of your business. And as such, you need to have a strategy for delegating tasks that are not in your zone of genius or that you're just simply not efficient at. Hire a virtual assistant. We have a great episode on how to hire a virtual assistant, and I will link that in the show notes as well. But for tasks such as these that you don't like to do or aren't good at, hire someone else to do it. And if you struggle with money mindset around hiring someone, do the situational mind modeling around hiring so that you can focus your efforts and your time and your energy on revenue generating activities. The other part of a hiring strategy is to have a strategy for a coach or a mentor, but not just any coach or mentor. You want someone who also has a coach who truly believes in furthering their education to grow because we we can become stagnant if we aren't always learning and we can limit our growth if we aren't always learning. And the fact of the matter is that as entrepreneurs, as coaches, we don't know what we don't know. So when you have a coach who has a coach, like I'm a, co a business coach, but I also have a coach who has a coach who has a coach. So this trickle effect of learning in it, it does nothing but improve opportunities for growth and for getting better results. You also want to have someone that's aligned with your values. 
This recommendation is especially valid for anyone who is a coach. When you hire a coach, you're going to be a better coach. The same is true if you want to have a group program, join a group program. Because the more you experience these things, the better you're going to be able to create a strategy to run your own programs and offers. And then lastly, I want to touch on mindset strategy. And yes, we already talked about mindset, but you have to have a strategy in place and you have to implement the strategy for when you will do mindset work and how you will do mindset work. My go-to for mindset is always a brain dump in the morning and then journaling and catching those negative thoughts, those what ifs, um, those frustrations and getting them all out of my head onto paper and then changing the negative to the positive. And sometimes it's not even taking one thought and changing it to the positive, but it's just navigating that thought to see, okay, what is causing this thought? Where is this coming from? What am I not believing to be true that is true? And diving into scripture really helps me be able to do that as well. You can start, if you aren't used to diving into scripture, you can dive into the two that I shared earlier, Romans 12, 2 and Galatians 6, 4. Or I also have a blog post on um, scripture verses and a free downloadable ebook on 37 Bible verses that every entrepreneur should be familiar with and reflect on. So you can always download those items. But mindset strategy is a continuous, not one and done type of effort. Your mindset strategy may include meditation. Some people that works really well, but it is important to note that journaling is actually equivalent to meditation. So if you're not someone that, that meditates and can do meditation effectively, no big deal because you can journal and journaling will give you the same, um, authority over your neural pathways and help you change those neural pathways and how those negative thoughts are coming in and how frequently they're coming in so that you can have more positive thoughts and have more control over your thoughts. Okay. Lastly, if you want to get results, you must take intentional action. The action begins with doing the mindset work to ensure your beliefs and thoughts will move you forward towards reaching your goals. In addition, action includes creating strategies and implementing them. If you do the mindset work, but you don't have strategies or take action, you're not going to get anywhere. If you do the mindset work and have strategies, but you don't implement them by taking action, you're not going to get anywhere. You have to have all three. But the key to action is accountability. And that is why the purpose to results method is unique. And it includes the accountability framework, because I firmly believe when you have someone to be accountable to, you're going to be more likely to take action. And it's not pressure, it's not added stress, it's the fact that you can say, okay, my goals for this week are X, Y, Z, and you have someone to hold you accountable for taking the action. And if you haven't gotten it done, then you have someone to be there to say, okay, what happened? Why didn't you get it done? Was there a significant life-altering event that held you back? Or was it a mindset hiccup that held you back? Was it fear? Was it doubt? Were you procrastinating? Let's break that down and figure out why you didn't take the action and how you can take the action in the coming weeks. A plan of action is absolutely necessary. So map out your goals and the results that you want, but create a strategy and then take that intentional action step by step to get results and grow your business for limitless earning potential. So in the show notes, I'm going to link also the 10 strategies to start and grow your business without relying on social media ebook. You may find that helpful. Some of those strategies I've outlined here today. And then I also am going to invite you to book a call with me and learn more about the purpose to results method and the one-stop marketing strategy and business coaching program that I offer. All right. With that, everyone, I thank you for being here with me today. I'm so grateful every single time you join me on the show. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be able to share my knowledge to help you grow businesses that 
not only stand out, but truly have an impact. And together we can create that ripple effect of good in the world and just keep it moving on. So thanks for being here. Love to all of you. And I will see you all next week.